So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Grace and today I'm joined by We The Kingdom. Uh, so you guys are about to enter into a really exciting season and you just released a new single called Miracle Power. Uh, what's the story behind that song? It's interesting. We've been working on it for quite some time. We were looking to put it on our last record, but it just wasn't finished. And I'm so thankful that God really had us wait feel like it needed some more work and even in our hearts we needed some more work around it but and we've all been talking about this you know with the song being our single just the, the word miracle it's it's a charged word you know it's it's when people think about that nowadays it's like well what does that even mean some people believe in miracles some people don't believe that god still does miracles and then it's like there's some polar extremes on even the, the thoughts behind miracles it's like well some people might say, well, if you have enough faith, God will do anything, you know. And then other people say, no, he, he doesn't work like that anymore. And I think where we really land and what it's challenged us to do is, you know, what do you do in life when you wake up and you get some really bad news that you weren't planning on? Maybe it's a sickness that you're dealing with in your own body or someone that you love. You know, maybe it's bad news about a job irregardless it's like what do you do with that and i think andrew's talking about the word believe in this song how powerful that word is uh, to make those declarations and i think there's something really powerful about saying hey you know what i don't understand everything sometimes i don't know what i might be going through or what might come you know to my doorstep at any given day but the fact that we believe that god is a miracle working God that he has miraculous power is just, it's a great comfort, you know, to know that, Hey, if he needs to pull out that card and drop a miracle, he can do it. Mm -hmm. And I fully believe that he can. And I believe that he does. And I believe what we call miracles today, you know, are, I mean, I, I've experienced the miraculous power of God. I don't like that. He delivered me from drug addiction. And I, every day i'm so thankful for that it, it most definitely feels like a miracle in my life and i know we all have stories of that so it's it's interesting the more we talk about the song the more i realize gosh there's a lot to unpack here so i'm really excited to be able to carry this song over this next season yeah it's awesome and you guys like this is just your debut single from your upcoming album uh what's that album going to be like and what can fans expect from that we know the title. <laughs> We've actually today we're just throwing around ideas for titles and trying to figure that out. But I mean, it's it's been really fun to make the record. Uh, I think it was hard to make a second record because the last one felt um, just so a natural overflow of our last few years of life. You're not thinking about it. Yeah, we weren't we weren't trying hard. It was just there. Like, and it really felt even the songs. Like we weren't trying to write songs. We just kind of were together hanging out, and ideas came in. And so this time it's like, okay, we have to write songs. We have to make a record of that pressure. Kind of just brings a little different intensity. Um, but I'm really excited about it because we have a little bit of everything. Like we have a song uh, that's a little more punk and a song that's like kind of throwback and a song that feels a little more film TV and gritty and, and some even like some gospel vibes, some really fun stuff. So yeah, a little bit of everything. And I mean, as the last record, we wanted it, um, everybody to be able to have a song for every kind of experience in life or emotion and the same on this record like okay how do and how do we even broaden that a little bit and broaden the sound so i'm really excited about it yeah heck yeah and I you mentioned we, oh go ahead just to tangent off of that i personally and i think all of us would agree to this we're really struggling with feeling the weight of other people's expectations of what mm -hmm. this record should be like when we first set out to make it and even our own yeah, absolutely. Like we, we kind of lost a little bit of at, at the beginning, we lost a little bit of just like our trust in ourselves and in each other for, for things, you know, we're like, oh, what are people going to think about this? And I think we've been recovering that through the process and God has been so good to help us in that. But I remember one time I was listening to some of the songs we've been working on on my way home from the studio. And I remember just kind of sitting back and being like, I really like this stuff. And like, it kind of just hit me like, that's enough. Like if we like it, that's all we can do. Hopefully we won't all be making music that only other people will like and then we don't even like. You know, that would be kind of betraying our own identity and, a, and our own self. So it's been cool to, to look at each other. And we, we have this tradition if we ever 
you know, write a lyric or a melody or, or a, put down a, a musical part that we love, we'll like take a hat or like a water bottle or whatever's around us and just like throw it on the ground out of excitement. So we had a lot of those moments. So we're, <laughs> we're really excited about it. I think it's going to be really good. We're fired up about it. So can't wait to share it with y'all. I literally just had the instinct to chunk my hat across the room. Chunk it. <laughs> Chunk, chunk, chunk. Hey man, I'm fixing to chunk my hat because the drum fired up by the song. Oh, you that's great. Chunk, chunk. Yeah. Chunk it. Yeah. Chunk it. Yeah. Chunk it. Chunk it. Chunk it. What is that, that's great? Chunk is it chunk or chunk? I think chuck, right? I've always heard that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am so chunk that hat. <laughs> So the bottom line is there's a lot of great songs, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah that was gonna that was gonna be my uh, follow up question because uh, you mentioned like the pressure, you know, from I'm sure your fan base and labels and all that. How did that affect the songwriting process, or did it? I think we procrastinate anyway as a band, <laughs> but it probably uh, exaggerated that tendency more uh we didn't have a ton of time anyway because we were out touring and the last fall with zach williams and we did a headline thing this spring and so it was our first time making a record out on the road you know and each day our studio would be different because we kind of carried a home studio with like two speakers <laughs> I that, <wish> you, <laughs> that is amazing Oh, oh my gosh. Our bus driver just literally got in the military army crawl and crawled oh underneath. Gosh. Wow, but good for him. Had... Welcome to her. That's a... That's a... That's a... Welcome no to the way. tour bus, right? Uh, I would um, like, I wish that I could say that the pressure did not affect the songwriting process, but it did. It did. Yeah. And it really did and it made it way more stressful than it probably should have been and way more tense than it should have been but you know what i was talking to my wife the other day just telling her how hard it was making this album and she was saying like hey that's because only god's going to receive the glory from it like you guys are not going to be able to look back and say look what we did you're going to have to look back and say look what god did because we couldn't do it and so that makes me really excited about releasing this album and kind of seeing what happens but Nice. And your tour bus driver coming in, that reminded me. Uh, what has tour life been like? I know you guys are on the road with Crowder, so uh, what's that Woo! experience been like for you guys? Oh, this tour has been so fun. So fun. We have the best tour bus driver. I yeah, we say. do. Come Come on, Come on, on, Major. Yeah. Well, since they're going to talk hey. about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally the best. That's Demetrius, and he's a legend and an icon. That is true. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this tour has been so fun. It's actually been really hot because we're playing all outdoor or mostly outdoor shows. Mm -hmm. And so we've been out in, you know, 90 plus degree heat um, and yeah. it's sweating a lot. But there's something I was actually talking, I think to Martin, there's, there's something like really rewarding when you feel like you're just giving it all and you can, like your body feels like exhausted. You're like, I just laid it all out there. So it's been, I don't know, really fun for me to like, Hey, it's gonna. I'm gonna get really sweaty tonight, but I'm just going there. We got off stage the first night of this tour in Orange Beach, Alabama. It was like in the high 90s, and the heat was, index was 103. Yeah, it was one of the hottest. It was the second hottest show we've ever played, and I was like not feeling great. And Martin, Martin finished the show. Mind you, how hot it was, and he goes, "Is anybody else shivering?" Yeah. And I was like, hey, "That's a sign of something very bad going on." With your body. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Are you okay? I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was like I should have drank a little more water, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... I should have chunked, chunked <laughs> some water. <laughs> chunked the water. A lot of stage clothes like, are dry clean only. And like, mm -hmm. so our stage clothes are a mess. Oh, they smell. Oh my gosh. So bad. We just have to keep. They're actually sweat clean only now. So oh. they just get cleaned right. every night during the show. <laughs> Oh, uh, welcome to tour life yeah <laughs> i live in las vegas so if you guys play the show here like it's extremely hot right now so right. listen that's crazy yeah <laughs> uh but you guys are going to be playing an indoor show at the ryman uh what are you guys expecting from that you guys are going to be playing with Corey asbury 
Right. Heck yeah. I mean, for me personally, so Martin and I actually like grew up in Nashville. We were we weren't born there. We moved there at like really young ages. I don't remember where we were born at all. So to me, like growing up there, the Ryman has always been my one of two dream venues to play, just because of all the history of just you know, growing up there, like, and I, I've gone to so many different types of shows at the Ryman, and it always is just so special, and so literally, like, I've always been, like, I wonder if, like, even as a young girl, I was like, I wonder if one day I might get to, like, play here, like, that would just be crazy, and now that it's actually happening, I'm just, like, I'm pretty overwhelmed about it, I mean, it's, like, right near my house, and I'm always there, so it's just, like, and, and there's, like, this part in the Ryman, like, you can kind of, like, sneak back, um, I think it's upstairs, uh, and the balcony is my favorite place to sit there, but if you, like, go um, back uh, behind the balcony, you can see all these different pictures of people that have played there and, like, signed their names. And it's just really cool just to kind of the legends of music, people who created soundtrack for our life played there. And I'm just, it just feels different in there than a lot of other things. It feels really, I don't know how to describe it, it's very special. So I'm excited, really pumped. And I love Corey. I really love Corey. Love his music. And that'll be just a really special night, so can't wait and you also are going on tour with him so what's that going to be like i think pretty wild party <laughs> town from what we know we don't know him super well but we know him well enough to know that he's kind of wild hippie you know into all the rowdy things that we are he rides he atvs <laughs> he likes to chunk things oh my gosh <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> that tour is going to be really fun because it's going to be the first time that we have sort of unveiled our next chapter live, you know? So we're working mm -hmm. right already really hard on this fall tour to figure out how to, because we spent, I mean, we spent like two years crafting our last tour that we've done and of all the moments in it. So now we're having to rethink everything and like, how do we, one up our last super special. We're we're working really hard to figure out how to make it super special. You know, to play these new songs in a way that uh, showcases what they are and what they're meant to be. So it's gonna be fun. I think too, this is our first time carrying an opening artist, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like in some ways freaky because it's like that's a big deal. You know, when you kind of step into that realm of like carrying multiple artists on a tour. Uh, but I think the beautiful thing is that when we were talking about, you know, who would we want to tour with and support even, you know, I think bigger than a business strategic move, it's like, who do you want to support as an artist who you believe in their music and that they're changing not only lives around the world, but like the Christian music industry with creative ideas. And uh, we just, we freaking love what Corey's doing creatively and love his heart for God, you know, he's, he's uh, doing some pretty amazing things. So I'm excited to um, champion another artist, you know, because sometimes it can feel competitive, you know, which is weird, especially in our industry. You're like, you're trying to uh, bring people to Jesus, but you're also competing against one another as businesses and artists. So I'm excited to uh, just champion him and, and kind of give him uh, just the best opportunities and, and chances, you know, just love on them. So it'll be great. That's awesome. And I know this has already been a really busy year for you guys, but what does the rest of 2022 and beyond look like? Hopefully we're going to get to rest here at some point. <laughs> I don't know about that. But December. This, this summer is going to be awesome because we're getting to do a bunch of festivals and fairs. Some of these are like pretty dream come true opportunities to get to go headline some of these big festivals so we're stoked about that we start next week as soon as this tour is over we go straight to creation um but uh so we're doing festivals and fairs this summer then we're gonna get a little bit of a break we get to, every year we go back to the, the high school kid camp where we where our band started it's a young life camp in georgia and so every year like no matter what else is going on we take a week and go spend the week with these kids who our band started for. And so it's always an amazing reset. It's something we look forward to every year. So we're going to do that in August and then fall tour. And then hopefully on paper right now, it looks like we're getting to take a little bit of a break in, in November and December. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, you guys need to get some rest, dry clean your clothes, all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next year, we got some super fun stuff in the works. So we can't really, we can't really go talk about it yet, but it's going to be awesome. 
All right, that's awesome. I'm excited to see what's next. And uh, as you guys are entering into the season, how can we be praying for you guys? Wait, rest. Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm. So in my mind too. Yeah. Sustainability. And I think, I think, uh, I mean, we do still have decisions to make. And I mean, even with, like naming the record and what songs to release to where and when. And, and so that God would really guide our hearts and that we would have very open hands with it. Because mm -hmm. after you work on something so hard, it's really easy to try to then control the outcome of it because you're like, these are my babies. It's, you know, and so I really want to give them the best opportunities and chances. And so you, you can overthink it real easily and real fast. And so that, yeah, our hands, our hearts would just be open and that the Lord would make very clear um, what we should do and, and we'd be able to listen to it. 